wife or a spouse and spouse. And I was not impressed at all in a recent lesbian ceremony where it was bride and broom, broom being the new word to substitute for bride and groom together. Just saying the words, I now pronounce you husband and husband, wife and wife, is really enough. So there's a profound reason why marriage has always been about uniting a man and woman together in lifelong commitment, in sexual intimacy, and as a general rule, childbearing. The two opposites making a new, wonderful whole and laying the foundation for the next generation. And whereas it is the exception to the rule for a heterosexual couple to be unable to produce their own children, and societal laws are based on the rule, not the exception. It is the rule without exception for a homosexual couple to not be able to produce children. And I don't say that gloatingly, but sadly. There is a unique and obvious biological compatibility between a man and a woman. And for those who believe in a creator, you can ask, what did he have in mind when he created male and female? And there's a unique and obvious emotional and temperamental compatibility between a man and a woman. And male plus male or female plus female can never equal male plus female. If you want equality, it has to be equal parts. In fact, because the tempering effect of the female is absent from male-male relationships, so-called open monogamy is commonly practiced among gay men. And there is no evidence that same-sex marriage has reduced this trend. This is just another reminder to us that marriage is not simply the combination of any two people, but rather the merging of a man and woman into one couple, and in most cases, their own family. Now that Spain has legalized same-sex marriage, you no longer have mother and father on the birth certificate, but progenitor A and progenitor B. Is that progress? Is that something to celebrate? Radically redefining marriage means that children raised in such households are guaranteed to have either no father or no mother, leading to the question, which sex is dispensable, female or male? And for those of you who were raised by a mother and father, which one of those two could you do without? The implications of this are profound. As noted by Don Stefanowicz, whose father was openly homosexual, what makes it so hard for a girl to grow up with a gay father is that she never gets to see him honoring, loving, or protecting the women in his life. And that makes a tremendous difference in a young woman's life. So male plus male, female plus female can never equal male plus female. And to this day, despite all of our scientific advances in fertility, every human being is the product of a male and a female. And there is no other way. And I want to press this point again. We're talking about the government redefining the very nature of marriage. And since the government has neither the obligation nor the interest to sanction or give special status to every romantic or sexual relationship, what is the compelling reason for the government to redefine marriage to include same-sex couples? There's none. And to say that it's a matter of equality presupposes that same-sex couples are exactly the same as heterosexual couples, which is clearly not the case. Let's focus now again on the question of the components of marriage. If marriage is simply the union of two people, rather than the union of a man and a woman, why should we limit it to just two? And don't say, well, that's icky, because some people feel homosexual relationships are icky. We're gonna have to do better than just saying it's icky. Please tell me why marriage should be the union of just two people. What's so magical about the number two if it's not the union of male and female? Tell me if you agree with this statement. This is by an advocate with the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. Quote, do you agree with this? Consenting adults have the right, the charter protected right to form the families they want to form. Do you agree with that statement? Well, she was arguing for polygamy. Are you willing to fight for marriage equality for polygamists? Late last year, Columbia University professor David Epstein was charged with carrying on a three-year consensual affair with his adult daughter. His attorney, Matthew Galuzzo, commented, it's okay for homosexuals to do whatever they want in their own home. How is this so different? We have to figure out why some behavior is tolerated and some is not. And, and students who were commenting on the Columbia University student newspaper website said this, why is consensual incest a crime? It might not be appealing to everyone, but if they're adults and they consent, who cares what they do? In an interview with the Huffington Post, Galuzzo also questioned whether, quote, Prosecuting incest was intellectually consistent with the repeal of anti-sodomy laws that resulted from Lawrence v. Texas in 2003. And he asserted that what goes on between consenting adults in private should not be legislated because the bedroom is not the proper domain of the law. Do you agree with him? 
There are now even scientists who have identified what they call GSA, genetic sexual attraction, where people who are connected by blood, in other words, close relatives, may be attracted to each other. Should they have the right to their sexual orientation of incest? You say, look, look, polygamy is abusive to women. Incest can produce handicapped children. But that still doesn't answer why marriage shouldn't include such possibilities. At least Newsweek said polyamory is the new sexual revolution. Traditionalists better get used to it. You've got at least half million families like this in America. Do we now introduce that in the schools? Marriage equality, we've got to be consistent. Tamper with the foundations of human society with the definition of marriage and everything else will be affected. Now, I'm not sure if Dr. Small will argue that gay is the new black that sexual orientation is akin to, uh, akin to skin color, innate and immutable, that just as it was bigoted and wrong to have laws against interracial marriage, it is bigoted and wrong to have laws against same-sex marriage, but this argument, as emotionally compelling as it may seem to be, is hopelessly flawed. As Dennis Prager observed, there are enormous differences between men and women, but there are no fundamental differences between people of different races. Men and women are inherently different, but blacks and whites and yellows and browns are inherently the same. Therefore, any imposed separation by race can never be moral or even rational. On the other hand, separation by sex can be morally desirable and rational. Separate bathrooms for men and women is moral and rational. Separate bathrooms for blacks and whites is not. A black man's nature is not different from that of a white man, an Asian man, a Hispanic man. The same is not true of sex differences. Males and females are inherently different from one another. So should the race analogy be used by my esteemed colleague? I'll address it in much more detail during my rebuttal. So to close, let's, let's remember that despite the presence of same-sex attractions in most cultures or many cultures throughout history, and, and despite the fact that some of these relationships were open and celebrated, no one thought about redefining the nature of marriage because marriage is about bringing two people together, a man and woman, for responsible procreation. That is why society and government cares about it and something that is a guaranteed exception to that rule, there is no reason to give it governmental status recognition to mess with the foundations, to tamper with these things, to change the meaning of marriage. So this is not bigotry. This is not hatred. This is not homophobia. This is not intolerance. This is about the meaning of marriage. And I, for one, thank God for the institution of marriage and do not want to see it change for the good of our society. Thank you. I'd like to thank Dr. Brown for his passionate defense of traditional marriage and introduce Dr. Eric Small for his opening statements. Okay, I want to make sure that my microphone is on. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. I said to my students when I first came in that I usually don't put on my glasses, but it seems to me that this is a serious event and I don't want to look like a youth compared to my um, more seasoned counterpart, so I should put on my glasses. I want to thank the UCF for putting on this event. I also want to thank all of you for coming out to this event. I want to thank Dr. Michael Brown for his passionate de uh, defense of traditional marriage. And the reason why I'm thanking all of you is because this is probably one of the most important issues that our country has faced in recent years. And much of Dr. Brown's conversation was a history lesson, so I'll put this also in the context of history. Many of the things that Dr. Brown told you I agree with except that claim that he made about this is not about civil rights. Well, yeah, of course it's about civil rights because if same-sex couples are allowed to marry, then they'll end up with certain rights. So yes, of course it's about civil rights. But the claims that he made about this is not about religion or it's not about morality, it's not about what he thinks or how he feels or what I think in particular or how I feel, I agree with all those claims, so I won't have to go through those claims. He did make a claim at the end, though, I thought was a strange claim about um, homosexuality and a comparison between black people. Um, I'll leave that, I'll leave that alone, because I want to get into what I'm going to say about what Dr. Brown did say. When he got into a conversation about polygamy and incest and I guess necrophilia and bestiality and we can throw them all in. I'm not going to talk about these things primarily because I told the organizers of this event that I wouldn't get into those conversations and I want to stick to that. 
But I will say this. Um, imagine that I am watching TV in the middle of the night. Let's say it's 11 o'clock at night.